uh, what I've been told and have researched, because I was still a kid then. Well, what um, what did you think of their policy of this is your height minimum, this is your weight minimum, and we're only looking for guys over this? Is there is there any uh, thing that you think that's that's really truly important, or that anyone can be a huge star like a Rey Mysterio, like a even you go to today Evan Bourne slash Matt Sydal, uh, AJ Styles, etc. Uh, I think that. Um, for the general part, I think like the height and weight requirements are uh, we're good, but I just think that you know, you're, we're talking about wrestling. You know, it's like a different, different sort of genre that it is now. Yeah, I mean, it was all like really big dudes, ex football, ex basketball, weightlifter guys. Now you know, there's so many different guys with like the Hardys. Because uh, I mean, I was there when the Hardy brothers like they they tried to get into WCW. And, and they were like, no, this, you know, those guys can't do this. They're not the right what we're looking for. And, you know, the big joke is now, like, they're huge, you know. So, yeah. once again, I mean, you know, no one can really say what, what, what is, what isn't. I mean, just, you know, I, I can't sit here and tell someone, like, oh, don't get into it. You don't have a chance. Because, you know, until you get out there and really try it and see what's going on, I, you never know. I mean, what gimmicks are going to work and what gimmicks aren't. Just who has what, you know. I thought that one kid in WWE with it had the one leg would get over it. Gowan, yeah. Didn't he, you know, it didn't do anything. He's, so. he's, he's Catholic, too. Really? Yeah. Yes, he is. I mean, that thing sort of just fizzed out. Well, just, I, from what I understand, part of that was because uh, he uh, was asking for more than Vince was willing to give. Just oh, in general. Really? Yeah. And I, I can understand. That's a that's a really big draw. People were, he was open. Yeah. In my opinion, very, very over. There were some. Took a beating. There were some very cynical, uh, typical smart mark fans that were against it and everything. But uh, he, he could he could wrestle with that yeah. little leg, and it was. I mean, he could really put a, put put on a good show. That's another thing too is you know with guys starting out is I mean you got to listen to the smart marks and stuff because they do have some good points, but a lot of them are really negative. So you just got to stay focused, and if you get the fans behind you, you know there's nothing better. So. Yep. Next question. Uh, uh, gimmicks, characters, all the stuff before the Yeti, all the stuff before you got famous. What kind of stuff did you try? What were some of your favorites? Do you have any regrets as, as to some of those? Uh, you know, I did just a lot of, like, independent one-shot stuff, so it was whatever. But, uh, you know, it was just all good to try stuff. You know, you can only do so much in, like, the gym and, you know, we always like being up on the same guy, so it was good to get out in front of other people. It's always nice to get in front of live bodies. I mean, you know, we wrestled like White and George of 20 people, more you know, more people in the locker room than out in the crowd. So, you know, nothing, it's just wrestling in front of live people with a live ring. Uh, just, you know, always be careful with the ring because, you know, I've seen so many guys like hit the ropes and the ropes break and stuff like that so I you know just get out there and try it you know anybody can sit there and say all kinds of stuff until you get out there and do it now you ever uh, have any comments on Big Ron stud that's one of the few that I saw before yeah no that one uh, you know it was always one that was near and dear to my heart but it never really took off so I don't know uh, when I wrestled with Dusty after the WCW uh, Dusty Rhodes that was one of the gimmicks that we, we did there and it was good. It's just that, you know, we never really got the promotion going where it needed to be. Yeah. I think now to do a promotion, you really need a television and a, and a strong internet following. I mean, it changes so much. You know, who knows? The next new technology tomorrow might change the whole wrestling world again. So. We have a lot of uh, different people doing YouTube podcasts and stuff, putting their stuff out there. They're just really yeah. kind of... Uh, putting their tiptoes in the water right now and trying not to give too much away for free. Right. But, you know, at the same time, you're giving away a whole two hours on TNA Impact or Raw for free, basically. There's a lot know? of wrestling on TV now. That was, I think, one of the downfalls of WCW was when we went to, like, eight hours a week of TV. I mean, it was it's, so much it's out there. hard to find eight hours of live TV. Yep. Of good TV, too. You know? Yeah, yeah. Those luchadors <laughs> filled it in pretty good, though. Yeah, they did. I mean, that's another one. I mean, it was funny because, you know, you had one side, WCW saying these are the guys we want, these are the sizes, and then they're bringing in all these new guys that they, you know, 
they can find higher uh, for less money and, and do all kinds of crazy stuff. Were there any of them that uh, you became friends with, Luchadors, off the top of your head? Uh, you know, Hoobintoot and uh, Ray Mysterio were good guys, and, and you know, they just kept switching them in and out so much. Psychosis. Yeah, it's hard to, hard to keep up yeah, with them. Yeah, they sort of stayed in their own little Conan clique. So. Yeah, got you, got you. Um, how did the Yeti come about? Uh, the Yeti was uh, Hulk Hogan had come back to WCW, well, I guess was coming to WCW. And they thought it would be a great idea to keep uh, Hulk happy and uh, bring all of his old buddies back. And what better way to have him, like, sort of face, I guess, the guys he faced before. So they had the Dungeon of Doom, and, uh, you know, just, it sort of got crazy. And, and I always laughed at, like, you know, the Dungeon of Doom, some kind of location, like, you driving down 75 South, and it's like, you know, Dungeon of Doom, three <laughs> exits away, you know. <laughs> But uh, they did the Dungeon of Doom, and um, uh, it was supposed to be like three giants uh, wrestling Hogan at, uh, it was the World War Three, I think, and it was supposed to be the big show, uh, Giant Gonzalez and myself, and they wanted to do a thing, it was like the first time, you know, three seven footers had ever been in the ring, and uh, they were getting down with Giant Gonzalez, he was doing the Yeti stuff, and he, uh, I think, has diabetes or something, and uh, he left to go back to uh, back to South America so they just called me up and said hey man you're the Yeti now so I was like alright and literally they went from there and then we went to the pay per view and then it sort of fizzled out so. what did they give you regarding the character for any kind of acting motivation just like that I had been in a block of ice for 2,000 years <laughs> and, you know and it's <laughs> sort of hard to think that, you know, here I am, yeah, I was like 26 years old. You're big Ron stuff. Yeah, here's all these guys, you know, they spent all this money to be like writers and they're coming up with this. Like, <laughs> is this the best too much power ranger, right? I mean, it's sort of, you know, I never really thought of wrestling in, in that terms of, you know, but I guess, you know, Kevin Sullivan was very much into good versus evil and sort of this evil entity, you know, so... Yeah, it was it was fun. It was fun hanging out with uh, Big Boss Man and One Man Gang and yeah. Hugh Morris. Who, yeah, he might not be like a real tall guy, but as far as like a big size guy, he was one of the best. He's underrated. Big yeah, guy. yeah. I mean, he's six two, six three, but I mean, he's a huge guy. Can really move. Uh, you know, it was fun with um, the not the Wild Simones, but uh, Haku and. Uh, and uh, uh, Barbarian. Barbarian. King Curtis was there, you know. It's it was pretty wild. Pancake was time. Zodiac at the time. Yeah, right? yeah. I mean, it was like, you know, this goofy bunch of characters, but it was fun. And then, you know, I don't know. It sort of fizzled out after that. There, and NWO there, came in. So. One of Hogan's uh, promos since then has kind of become a uh, internet phenomenon uh, from one of his promos back then. And he. It, it, it was something that you really didn't pick up unless you were really listening to what he was saying. But he was walking through one of those Dungeon of Doom sites, you know, the really weird ones. Yeah. And he comes in, there's like a fountain, and he touches the water, and he goes, It's not hot! Right. Like, what? <laughs> it's yeah, not hot? Right. Well, I mean, like, I can imagine him yelling, It's hot, you know, or something like that, or, or it's cold. But he goes, It's not hot! I mean, it was really just like sort of something your children would watch on. You know? Yeah. Power Rangers. Yeah. It really reminded me of Power Rangers. Just goofy stuff. You know, so, <laughs> I don't know. Um, what would, uh, yeah. Way too far ahead. Uh, how was it working with uh, Hogan and some of the bigger stars on the roster, like, immediately? Like, you were kind of jumped to that group of guys. Uh, it was good. I mean, it was one of those deals looking back now that was sort of a trip. But at the time, it was just like, you know, it was the way that we, they were doing it. You know, it was like they had to have the power plant. We are doing all this stuff. It was like, all right, you know, they would call you on Friday and say, hey, you got to be in Detroit, Michigan, Monday night. All right. Were you ever starstruck at all? Uh, it was like a little bit of a trip, like, you know, seeing these guys that you'd seen on TV all this yeah. time. I mean, you know, first I'm sort of looking at them like, you know, and one thing about Hogan, I mean, Hogan's like a big dude. He's all of 6'5", six, 6'6", six, six, you know, yeah. so it's not like, you know, but then you, know, you see some of these other guys, and you're like, wow, that guy's not really that big. Yeah. You know, like, you know, Dean Malenko, he looks huge on TV, but you know, he's only like 5'6". Yeah. Yeah, you, know, you forget how you know uh, Benoit and Guerrero uh, yeah. and those guys—they they weren't that big. But you see them out there wrestling, it's like yeah, 
Yeah, yeah, it has a persona mean. of being much larger. So. Yep. Um, Who were some of your favorite wrestlers? Go ahead, change change sides here. My, some of my favorites, my absolute favorite from when I was very young, and I'll tell you.